of meeting to order. This is rules and open government committee meeting for May 15th, 2013. Any changes to the agenda order? All right. Council meeting May 21st. Agenda would be where we'll start. Anything on page one? Page two or three? Item 2.7, the agreement with Myers Navi for legal services related to the fiscal reform plan. Uh, there's a memo out on that. Uh, I think we need uh, a republication of the previous memo that listed all of the cases and and uh, administrative actions that uh, we're, we're involved in with outside counsel. I think there yes, are nine, the nine Superior Court actions and seven we're administrative. We're in the process of updating the last memo. Okay, good. Anything else on two or three? Page Four or five. Page six or seven. Page eight, which is the last page I have. I have a note that we need a sunshine waiver on the commercial solid waste customer service re Rates. What do we need on that? Um, part B, the agreement was posted today, so a 10-day waiver of the legal docs. The memo was out within the normal time frame. So that's the franchise's agreement itself? That, yes. That posted already? Yes. Okay. Anything on page 10 or 11, which are the evening matters? I see we have... One recommendation for a deferral of June 11th, leaving us with one item on the evening, but we have three ceremonial items. And a, I guess, and a drop. Anything on those pages? I have one request for an addition, uh, an additional ceremonial item accommodation regarding affordable housing week. Motion to approve the agenda with the addition and the 10-day waiver for 7.2. Second. We have a motion to approve. I have a request to speak, Mr. Wall. Good afternoon, sir and madam. 3.5, the workers' comp, $4.6 million for Athens and that medical provider network. I know Councilmember um, Constance done a great job with workers' comp, but this is starting to balloon out again, and we need to have a running tally of how much money we're spending contracting out for workers' comp versus the good people we already have on the payroll. The 6.1, the one point, basically roughly $1.26 million grant from the state, from the Metropolitan Transportation uh, Commission. I'm always concerned about all these grants and their obligations, long-term obligations and what they force uh, city managers to have to deal with in the future to allocate, allocate resources to, to make sure we're, we don't below our obligations. I think these obligations need to be made public. The four, on 7.3, this really gets me, $4.5 million for sanitary, uh, sanitary sewer and storm flow uh, monitoring. Uh, I suspect this is for recalculation of the sewer service and use charge and the storm sewer charges. I don't like how there's a, uh, the taxpayers at a single family home pay one rate. High density living people, they pay a different rate. Affordable housing people pay no rates uh, as far as, as the sliding scale goes, so there's a disparity on who pays for this. And I still advocate uh, that I want at my house a residential uh, flow meter so my flow of sewage to the sanitary collection system is measured accurately so I can be charged accurately as referenced by Proposition 218. Thank you. That includes public testimony. We have a motion to approve with the changes in waiver on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Not opposed. That's approved. We have no meeting on May 28th through the holiday weekend. Nothing on upcoming study session agendas. Nothing on legislative update. We have public record. Anything from public record the committee would like to pull to discuss? Councilmember Constant. Yeah, just uh, item number A. I'm just wondering if we can check and see 
if we if there's a mandate that we use certified mail I know we do notices for all types of hearings and I don't believe we use certified mail for a majority of them um, so I wonder if we could just check that and see because it does seem like a lot of extra money and certified costs about what six times five times that of a regular letter I'll follow up. thank you and then motion to uh, refer that one note file the other second Let's just refer one, note and file the others. Martha O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Councilperson Constant, for pulling out that for referral. I don't believe there's mandatory because the attorney for the Bay Area Legal Aid sent out her documents just through the regular mail, so I doubt that uh, it is required. I would like to point out that this program is supposed to be self-funded. And there is an annual fee that the everyone in the park pays half and the park owners pay half. And that program has been running in the red for literally years. So this would be a way for not only the, the, um, the city to save money, but to rectify a program that has been running in the red for year after year after year. Um, I know it may seem like a small amount of money, but if we add all this stuff up, uh, hopefully someday we're going to get to a balanced budget. David Wall. The city owes a ongoing debt of gratitude to uh, Ms. O'Connell and to Councilmember Constant uh, with reference to senior issues. In reference to this, too, uh, the, the city owes an on ongoing debt of gratitude to Martha O'Connell for her uh, analytical prowess in bringing up this costly oversight that one must try to figure out how come nobody else saw this in the administration with all the resources that are at your command. Uh, Councilmember Constant has to be held out for special accolade for his continuing support for the senior citizen uh, community. With reference to item B, Operating Engineers Local Union Number 3 has an interesting complaint here, and I suggest that uh, you look at it because uh, I don't think that they're raising any, uh, you know, unnecessary complaint, and therefore, uh, somebody's not in the city not doing their job to irritate this union, and I think that this is an unnecessary irritation to rise to the level of having to come to the rules committee. Thank you. That concludes public testimony. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Not opposed. That's approved. Nothing under boards, commissions, and committees. I Category G, first is AB 28 uh, by Manuel Perez on enterprise zones. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Members of the committee, Betsy Shotwell, Director of Intergovernmental Relations. Uh, you have before you two measures related to the enterprise zone program in the state of California, of which, of course, the city of San Jose is a participant. We uh, had to institute the expedited bill process for these measures. They were up last month in committee. We, in that process, consult with the mayor's office, city attorney, of course, the department responsible and, and the, the lead uh, office of economic development and um, the city manager. And we uh, also uh, have to align and we do align with a recently adopted legislative guiding principle for 2013, which is to preserve and protect the enterprise zone program. So you have two measures before you. Uh, the first one, AB 28, is a request to reaffirm support that uh, this measure uh, be supported by the city of San Jose. It is a, a major bill to help uh, deal with some of the requirements and conditions of the program. Uh, our staff supports it, and staff from Economic Development is here to answer any questions on this measure. And the other one, uh, John Lang, who manages the program. Okay. Uh, this First one was AB 28 by Perez, and the second one is SB 434 by Hill. So we're going to take uh, testimony and we'll deal with uh, both of them together, I think. All right, questions, Councilmember Constant? Just a process question. If we've already taken a position, why do we have to reaffirm the position? When the council adopted this uh, practice in 2009, that was one of the, the conditions following those steps that then we do bring this back to the full council and, of course, for the public as well okay. to review and comment. Vice Mayor Nguyen. Thank you. Uh, Betsy, you know, with the governor's uh, uh, revised budget uh, proposal, it seems like there is a plan to eliminate enterprise zones. Uh, 
how, how is that going to impact sort of what we're trying to do here? I mean, even if we continue to say that we support, um, you know, the enterprise zone here in San Jose, uh, it's very evident almost, um, you know, it hasn't been, the budget hasn't been adopted yet. But um, I don't think that this governor is, is actually looking to save uh, the enterprise zone in any way. And it seems like the That's money correct. is being shifted to different programs now. Well, it could be in down the future now. The actual language for that proposal, uh, which mirrors similarly to what he has been commenting on since January, is not yet but put in writing or print, so it's difficult to know. Uh, it's, we're still functioning as we would, but of course, to your point, when the budget's passed, if it got the two-thirds necessary to make these changes, then I would have to defer to staff of how this would all play out. But clearly, the, the continuation from the governor's office uh, advocating for the elimination is, is, is evident. Okay, thank you. Mayor. Well, the governor wants to eliminate them. There are uh, certainly uh, some members of the uh, Senate and the Assembly that don't, and that will get worked out, and we need to be engaged in those conversations uh, yes. to try to you know, save w what we can, yes. I think. Notwithstanding the fact that the government would like to eliminate them, others uh, may disagree, and there's a process for that. Councilmember Oliverio. Uh, Betsy, to, to uh, Councilmember Constant's question um, in process, so we may make a recommendation early and then as the bill solidifies and all the details and you're bringing it back. Well, I try to bring it back to Council in the expedited process as soon as I possibly can. So this action took place in April. Certainly if changes were made to the bill or amendments, we'd come back again with further recommendations or or uh, information, but oh. so I just try to come back as soon as we possibly can with our calendar and scheduling and process, so that this is, uh, you know, made public. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that I, I think we need if we're going to be successful at hanging on to enterprise zone is help from the private sector uh, on this, and not generic as we think enterprise zones are a good thing, but. Uh, companies that have benefited from it, companies that have created jobs, companies that have hired people need to uh, step up and h help us out. Uh, we don't really know who they are. And I understand there's some confi confidentiality around the use of the data and the names and all that. That's not very helpful because if we, the city of San Jose are saying, well, this is really good, we, we issued uh, 20,000 vouchers and spent millions of dollars of state money, it's all about the spending. We need to make this about the job creation. Right. And to do that, we need private sector companies. Now, I find it hard to believe that if we go to a private sector company and say, can we use your name, and they consent that it wouldn't, would still be confidential. Because I you know, know some of these companies that have gotten vouchers and we use, uh, well, Adobe for one. Mm -hmm. I've used that many times, you know, how much money they get as a result of being in an enterprise zone. And so I, I think we ought to refer this to staff as it goes forward because the, the generic defense that this is a great economic development tool isn't going to cut it uh, when we're dealing with the state legislature. They need to hear from, you know, their constituents who have benefited from it, and that's the only way we're going to be able to hang out. I don't know if John Lang has something he wants to wants to add. Uh, thank you, Mayor, members of the committee, John Lang, Office of Economic Development. I am the Enterprise Zone Manager. Uh, related to your point about the confidentiality by statute, uh, we cannot release the names of companies participating. However, if companies do provide us permission to use their name or um, use their name on behalf of the program, we can do that. And several companies have stepped forward saying, please use our name on behalf of supporting the program. I do have that information. I'm happy to share that with the committee as, as Good, needed. That would be helpful. I would suggest we go through the list and find the 10 most recognizable names and see if they'll let us use their names. And I'm happy to, to work with the OED staff to contact those companies because it, it's completely different if it's the city of San Jose, but if it's the city of San Jose and Adobe, for example, uh, it's a more powerful argument in the legislature. So, Mayor, I think what I hear you saying is um, Let's, let's get uh, the concurrence to use the names and then actually actively campaign and enlist them in right. uh, putting pressure on Sacramento. Yeah, they, sh they should stick up for their own interests here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, every request to speak on these, uh, Mr. Wall. The 
three items that are basically integrated is the foreign trade zone the enterprise zone and getting and obtaining the united states patent office here in san jose all this work has been going on for some time and yet the three hasn't really gelled into an operational triad state of california is well right within their rights with a uh, sb 434 part and parcel because the city of san jose has thrown so much money in these enterprise zones and yet, by our own admonition from our auditor, we have yet to see the quid pro quo. How many jobs per how many thousands of dollars or millions of dollars we spent. So that is basically the impetus for Senate Bill 434 because it is a giveaway program in their eyes. And we've just started to quantify the amount of money, which should have been done all along from the Office of Economic Development to sustain or to justify this type of activity. Now, Senate Bill or Assembly Bill 28 is basically, well, let's reform this, much along the lines of reforming or trying to reform the old redevelopment agencies. Same type of argument. It's a good thing. It went away. It went bad. It went terrible. So let's reform it. But it's really hard to sell, to reform something for the very people that ran the program into the ditch. When you think you have all the resources that you have at your command, you failed to integrate it in a timely manner with quantifiable results. So there you are today. You're going to make whatever decision you make, but Senate Bill 434 is a result of just substandard performance by council and the administration. That concludes the public testimony on these uh, two items. We're sure going to consider it one motion, I think, here in a minute. Anything else, staff? No. Is there a motion? Motion to support staff recommendation. Second. Motion is to uh, approve staff recommendation, and that will put them on the council agenda for the 21st, correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not opposed. That's approved. Thank you very much. Both of those are approved. Item four is a District 6 Shakespeare, Shakespeare in the Park is council-sponsored special event. Motion, motion to approve. Second. Motion is to approve. We have one request to speak. Scott. Lane here. I didn't expect anyone to vote against us. I just want to say this is fantastic. Shakespeare has a lot of fans. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre Luigi has done this. Other folks have done this. This is just a, 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 a low cost, high value item. It, it interacts families. It gets businesses together to chip in. This is a win 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 solution. This is a classic model of what we've been doing well in San Jose and what we need to do more. So I just wanted to say that and say kudos again. Thank you. Does Councilman Oliverio have a speaking part? Uh, I will I have to practice, Mayor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I know. Long soliloquy would be your specialty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. That's Pierre Luigi, not Ash. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a motion to approve on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not opposed. That's approved. All right, next item is uh, G5. That's a request to schedule study session to discuss the three trestle bridge. By Councilmember Oliverio's memo. Councilmember Oliverio, you want to speak to your memo? I do have some requests from the public to speak. Uh, yes, that would be fine. I'd like to uh, obviously hear from the public, and uh, but just the recommendation is to have uh, the opportunity to have this come back with some consideration for further research on the topic and then have the council discussion regarding that. And although I didn't put a date uh, of when it should happen, my, my preference is sooner versus later, and you know, and ideally before we're breaking for July. But at that point, at this point, I'd, uh, I'd like to hear from the public, Mayor. Okay, uh, Councilor Constant. Just a process question, because I know we've run into this in the past. Aren't there guidelines on how we deal with reconsiderations? Yes, um, under the the general rules of, um, of Robert's rules and also the City uh, Council rules um, procedure, uh, motion for reconsideration of any item needs to take place that particular day uh, when the Council took action or the following week. Um, the question is whether or not this is actually a reconsideration of those actions. Um, in just generally lo looking back at the actions that were taken with regard to this particular matter, it appeared to be simply um, approval of applications for grants and also an amendment to one of the engineers' um, agreements. So those actions cannot be reconsidered. However, actions related to the Three Creeks Trail uh, bridge can be taken. It depends on what the action is. Um, and so. 
Um, we'll wait to see what the action is, that, what the motion is that, that Council Member um, Oliveria has to determine whether it is an actual a motion for reconsideration or whether it's an, a, a totally different motion that, that the Council can consider. Any else? I, I will ask for assistance from the attorney when I make a motion, but okay. I'd like to hear from okay. the public. Thanks. Well, let me just say this is whether it's a reconsideration or just an ordinary do over. Uh, the council has already taken action uh, multiple times, and I'm not inclined to redo uh, the action taken absent some very good reason uh, uh, to do that. Uh, but we'll hear what those reasons might be. Uh, we'll, I guess we'll take public testimony yeah. now. Comes from Larry Burial. All right. Uh, please come on down, Larry Ames. Hi, I'm Larry Ames, a friend of Willow Glen Trussell. I want to thank you, Councilmember Oliverio, for bringing this to the Rules Committee. But I fear that just a study session would be insufficient because you guys, the Council is very busy with budgets now. And uh, meanwhile, the Parks work, Public Works is signing contracts for the Trussell's demolition. We need a Council action to suspend the action by the PRNS and uh, Public Works and to bring the matter back to Council for a full discussion. I understand that Parks is rushing forward because the Prop 40 grant may be expiring. I asked Francis at uh, aid to Ca Senator Bell about this, and it's apparently already too late in the legislative cycle to seek an extension. But then she asked me whether the grant could even be repurposed for la from land acquisition to trestle demolition. Mm -hmm. Also, when you, the CEQA review that you'll have to go through for, and the environmental studies will probably slow you down for so much that the grant will be expired by that time anyhow. The Water District gave the city a half million dollars designated for trestle restoration. The district directors are indicating that they may want to review that also to see about whether that can be repurposed. Last week, a few of us met with Parks Department, Public Works, and the principal engineer at the, uh, and the engineering consultant. We all agreed that the trestle op restoration option is quite viable. We disagreed on the cost of the replacement bridge option. The engineering report, if you look through it, all the numbers in there, they only have $58,800 for the complete removal of the trestle. I've talked to some professionals in, the, in, this, exper in this business, and they estimate it'll be $1 to $2 million. Also, the cost estimate in the estimate there was for a basic model bridge, and we in the community have been promised something fancier. The question is, is the city borrowing money from the Parks Fund based on these cost estimates and the assumption that the grants will all come through? And what will happen if there is a cost overrun or <coughs> the grants cannot be repurposed? The Santa Clara County Board of County Supervisors voted to have county parks help you with the design of this stuff. We've worked with them in the past on other things, and they're very good at uh, adapting. Sorry, your time trails. is up. Just well, thank Thanks. you. We have other speakers. We'll take them. Alice Kaufman. Good afternoon, Alice Kaufman for Committee for Green Foothills. So we're, uh, Committee for Green Foothills is an environmental organization and what we're concerned about is the environmental impacts. Uh, Los Gatos Creek is, is, has a significant um, natural resources and wildlife habitat and we're concerned about the potential environmental impacts of demolition, which would involve heavy, which would involve heavy machinery and uh, potential damage to the creek as well as uh, we, don't, we don't know the potential impact of the creosote timbers, if they were to be broken up and wood particles and wood chips were to enter into the creek bed, creosote is a toxic chemical that's killing all wildlife. So we're concerned about uh, the possibility of the environmental impact. So we would encourage you to take a step back and consider the environmental impact before making a decision. Thank you. David Wall. Creosote contamination doesn't do half the damage as those vagrants that are living down there. Um, with reference to the trestle, everybody likes the bucolic look of a trestle. But I think Councilmember Olivario and Councilmember Rocha are correct in looking at long term structural analysis. And before this meeting, I just happened to recall a train trestle in my neighborhood, right about next door to the old Hart department store warehouse building. That thing burned and Southern Pacific had to rebuild it. Why did it burn? Well, the heroin addicts that were digging tunnels, you know, their caves to, you know, to live in, the vagrants down there, torched it some years ago. It was a spectacular fire, and the same thing, 
basically could happen to this trestle. Also, pictures of the trestle that are shown in the media only reference the top part and how bucolic and rustic that it looks. But I suggest that you show the actual structural timbers, pictures of those, the graffiti and possible ax marks or whatever on these things. If they're there, just show the pictures. So people that like the idea of this trestle, and I, I think it's a good idea, as long as it has private funding coming in for it. And private funding should also fund the study, uh, the scientific analysis or engineering analysis to, to see the viability of retaining this structure. But fire is something, Mr. Mayor. I've seen it done in, on the trestle in my neighborhood. And that thing went down in a matter of minutes. And fire station number one is just across, across the bridge. So think of that. Gene Dresden. Good afternoon, I'm Jean Dresden, and I do ask that you bring this back to the council to explore more fully. A great deal has been revealed now that the engineering report was posted um, after the uh, council hearing. We've been able to look at it in a much greater detail, and a lot of questions have come up about all kinds of timing issues and the specifics of the grants. But most importantly, there are now that there's greater awareness, there are opportunities to use this as a way to position Willow Glen, to ha continue to create a there, to have an inspiring, unique place. There are people coming forward who would like to enter into partnerships about addressing some of the city's concerns and making it very special, concerns related to maintenance and long-term risks. We need to do this on a timely basis, preferably as uh, Council Member Roach just suggested prior to the July recess. Uh, we need to make our city really great and one way to do that is not to use cookie cutter bridges as was proposed by the Parks Department. We need to leverage our special unique assets. It gives us an opportunity to increase potential economic development when we have somewhere special. Thank you. Jack Nadeau. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Jack Nadeau, and uh, I live about 100 yards from the trestle. It's literally beyond my back fence. Uh, we bought our house in 1990, and whenever friends and family come over to see the house, usually we take a little tour of the trestle as well. Uh, basically, I've sort of uh, adopted it, in quotation marks, and I never thought that it would ever be destroyed. I thought it was just part of Willow Glen, and when uh, the study came up that recommended that it be replaced, I couldn't believe it. It came very quickly, and I, and I was just blown away. Um, that's why I think that the City Council should revisit the issue, just like it's recommended in the uh, Mercury News editorial uh, Friday. Rail trestle deserves a closer look. Uh, there, there was not enough public uh, feedback uh, before the City Council made its decision, and so I think it should make the decision again after considering, uh, you know, comments from people who are very interested in the history of Willow Glen. As you know, Glenites are, are very proud of our history, and the trestle is a huge part of it. Uh, it transported uh, goods for years that fed us, uh, California, and the world. It's, it's really an historical gem. And I was pleased yesterday at the Board of Supervisors meeting where they voted unanimously to work with the city to preserve this, this gem, as Ken Yeager calls it in his memo. Um, a similar thing, I don't know if I have time, but I'm also a member of the Safe Hangar 1 Committee. The Navy actually decided, among several alternatives, to demolish Hangar 1. There was a huge public outcry, and it's very similar to this situation here. The Navy decided, well, let's look at options again. And as you can tell, it's still standing. It's been recoded, and it'll be actually saved. And I believe that Hangar, I believe that the trestle also will be saved. Sorry, your time is up. Scott Lane.
Again, it's an exciting time to be in San Jose. It was uh, good to be uh, with the uh, folks last night at the District 6 uh, Committee Budget Meeting, um, to see the turnout of, of the people, and obviously it's so much of city staff. Um, two upcoming master uh, planning meetings are going to happen. Uh, the decision on the bridge was actually before the master planning meeting, uh, I believe. Um, I also am excited about the county staff with the offer to work. I know a lot of the folks at the county actually used to work with the city, so I think it's a quick um, way to do it. I would actually vote um, not in favor of Pierre Luigi's uh, offer in this case because I think it's a time issue. I, I don't want to get an external vendor. I'd rather have the folks that are used to working with the city uh, to come up with something much quicker to find out um, what's going on. I've learned so much in the last couple of weeks, um, and I know working together, uh, um, the city and county can do a lot. The PRNS staff has, has often said you know, that they're very responsive, and they certainly are. They've been doing great things with grants, great things with developing better and better their theirs. The trestle is definitely one of those destination spots. It could be made. It could be an economic engine for the area. The north part of Willow Glen actually does not really have a lot going on. It could be a redevelopment opportunity for us. Uh, there are a lot of people that have reached out to try to find out what they can do, and they're looking at the maintenance costs. The ongoing maintenance costs I know are a key aspect to this, and if that can be taken off the plate of the city's concerns, that's one as well. And in the engineering report, they actually said, we can do either, but it's a decision on many issues on the matrix on table 16, 5-7 is where that's discussed. And one of the issues that's also there is the issue of fire. And fire is actually addressed in the engineering report as well, but that can also be looked at because that's a key thing. If we want this bridge for, to be here another 90 years, we need to make sure we can do that. One of the key ways is by making the trails all come really quickly. It's eyes on the street, eyes on the trail, and my concern is we want no delays in getting this done. We want, we want the trails to all be going as fast as we can into these areas. The faster we get Sorry, people your time is them, up. the faster they'll enjoy them. Helen Thank Chapman. You. Good afternoon. My name is Helen Chapman, former Parks Commissioner, member of Committee for Green Foothills, and founding member of the San Jose Parks Foundation. I want to thank Councilmember Oliverio for bringing forward the concerns of the community to the Rules Committee today. I'm hopeful this committee will consider bringing back this issue to the full council before July to allow greater community conversation and a full vetting of all the issues. We have an opportunity to save money and involve potential investment dollars in collaboration from a variety of sources. The San Jose Parks Foundation is ready to help. Santa Clara County Parks is ready to help. Yesterday, Supervisor Wasserman suggested looking at funding sources that the town of Los Gatos used to save their bridge. We should do that. Environmental issues should not be an either or. We should not have to choose between land acquisition or maintenance. It shouldn't be trestle bridge or trail connection. It should be looking at all options with the eyes of the goal, achieving the best we can offer to our community now and for future generations. As my mother always told me, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Thank you. Charles Jacobson. I'm Jake Jacobson, a resident of San Jose. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning. Uh, our main concern is there's been recent articles, uh, editorials in our local newspaper that I think have had misrepresentations and perhaps a bit of exaggeration. And I'd like to talk about some of those issues. Preservations, preservationists like to use buzzwords like historic, iconic, um, engineering marvel, crown jewel. Well, if you're a preservationist, that's fair. Regarding crown jewel, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. To me, the Three Creek Trestle over Los Gatos Creek is a pile of, uh, of creosote telephone poles tied together with trestle cross, cross members supporting an old railroad bridge. If you want to look at a beauty, at, look at the, excuse me, I'm out of, my, out, of, out of place here. The beauty of the Three Creeks Trail is the wide um, right of way of 60 feet, the natural landscaping and the planned landscaping that the city planned to put in place. The Mercury News editorial said that the um, 
Street Freaks the, that the trestle was an engineering marvel, when in fact it is a very mundane example of thousands of trestles that have been built in the USA. An engineering marvel example is the arson destroyed trestle um, that exists in the property of the um, um, Roaring Camp Railway in, uh, in Felton. Sorry, your time concerns. is up. No. Sorry, Sit, you're out of time. Oh, oh, can I just make one last? No, I've got other people who want to speak. I want to give them their chance, two, two minutes. Uh, Barbara Keegan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and um, members of the Rules Committee. I appreciate having the opportunity to speak. I am a Santa Clara Valley Water District um, board director, and this um, trestle and the trail are actually located within my district. I'm not here today to talk about the merits um, of utilizing the trestle versus um, the other options that are being considered, such as, as um, a more easily maintainable bridge. And I, and I do understand the city's financial constraints and concerns in terms of um, future maintenance obligations. But um, what I would like to express is that the Water District's trail grant program, um, from our ex uh, uh, perspective, is intended to do something good for the community and bring the community together. And um, I've had a number of communications from the, the people, my constituents, and not just those um, blanket email ones, but people contacting me personally, expressing their concern about the process and, and what's being proposed. So I would strongly encourage you to take another look at this. I know that there's um, great minds with the city staff um, that I think can come up with some viable alternatives that will satisfy the city's concerns and the communities as well. Thank you very much for providing this opportunity. Richard Zappelli. Good afternoon, Mayor and uh, committee members. I'm here to, to, first of all, try to clarify something that was misstated in the uh, editorial on the Mercury News. The Mercury News uh, representative, the Wolga Neighborhood Association, did not vote and, uh, and endorse the removal of the trestle and replace it with a steel trestle. That is not true. We had a, we had a bo board discussion. It went back and forth. And after a long period, period of discussion, we decided the best use of, of, of the, the funds that were raised to replace the trestle would be to tear the trestle down and replace it with a steel trestle. That was our, and it was unanimous. 100% of our board agreed. Also, our concerns have to do with two attempts, two arson attempts on the trestle. And if that happened like two o'clock in the morning when everybody's asleep, it probably would have gone up in smoke. The smoke would be toxic smoke, not good for the people living in the neighborhood. The other thing is if it did happen to a new trestle, a new wood trestle, uh, would the city have the ability to come back and replace that trestle with another wood trestle? And we're also concerned about the grants as well. So uh, I attended the uh, Save Our Trails meeting where, where the Parks Department, Eve Zudi, made a presentation and he gave us all three options and he was very clear and very fair and answered all our questions. Based on that, and photographs we took currently of the trestle condition, we voted to uh, replace the trestle with a steel trestle. We were very clear about that. Thank you. Roland LeBrun. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. So contrary to, to, uh, uh, from what you read in the press, you've heard from many people that due process was followed and that the uh, council took appropriate action and really should not be resisted. With regards to environmental impacts, I'd like to uh, point out that you would use the same technique to repair the trestle or to remove it. You would not smash it. You would deconstruct it. Um, in conclusion, it, you basically have two choices. You can either close the matter, follow council's advice, close the matter here right now, or bring it back, uh, bring it back to council and have a study session. But as far as I'm concerned, right now the city council has got better things to do. Thank you very much. 
That concludes the public testimony. Bring us back for the committee's uh, discussion. Uh, Council Member Oliverio. Thank you, Mayor Reed, and thank you, members of the public. Uh, I think there's been a lot of eloquent things said uh, on, on a variety of items on the subject matter. Um, I, maybe I take you back, as some of you remember, in 2007, I asked this council to support moving forward of purchasing this former railroad land. Prior to 07, the city had passed on buying the land on the first right of refusal. But the purpose was to purchase, was to convert the property of the trail, so thus rails to trails, and the council supported the request. And it took us two years to solidify the purchase. And it also helped to have a housing recession. Um, during that time, Save Our Trails, uh, a nonprofit organization led by Taisa McMahon, uh, partnered with my office and the Parks Department to help a gardener additional funding necessary because we had a gap uh, from a variety of organizations, including the Open Space Authority. And I also appreciate uh, Larry Ames and Sean Milligan, who also uh, helped in that regard. Um, so I want to add that you know Save Our Trails has been meeting for four years. Um, uh, my office attends their meetings. Uh, these meetings are all open to the public and agendized. And over the past six years, the discussion of the trail and the components along it were discussed, including ensuring the trail was safe, there was the connectivity, and that the funding was for available at some point to develop the land. And uh, I'm confident that um, my office, as well as the Parks Department and Save Our Trails, has worked diligently together for many years, not just recently, but many years, to make the trail and all its components something that the city can be proud of. So during this six-year period discussion, the, the discussion of the bridge occurred. The subject matter was that the city staff was not sure uh, that the bridge would remain in its current state because we had not done the engineering study. And, and I always said, and I think many of you remember those meetings, I just want to make that bridge ADA compliant as cheaply as possible, make it work so we can connect the trail. But again, that was a person saying something before an engineering report. So uh, as many pointed out, the Bridge was built uh, way back in 1922, so therefore it's over 90 years old, um, and the railroad stopped using it, and so essentially we've had uh, no work on the bridge for over a decade since it's been abandoned. And in the report it talks about uh, some of the matters, you know, when you don't have uh, preventative maintenance and you have f fungus and rot and decay in the wood. Um, and you know, I, I've grown up here and I've, I want to make sure San Jose has its uniqueness. I think we look back to uh, I can't remember what it is, but the tower that used to be downtown with the light on it. And, uh, you know, I've, it's a side, but, you know, I've been very passionate about neighborhoods of distinction, allowing private property owners to preserve their own property and preserve their neighborhood. And that's something we've been trying to do, but, you know, for lack of uh, budgeting bandwidth, we have not been able to do it. But that's something that I think preservationists and uh, the greater community supports. So staff hired an engineer to do this report. Um, the report came back that the, tr the trestle beam is not, uh, the trestle bridge is not historic. Why? Because over the years it has had a variety of uh, issues, fires, et cetera. So it's not historic, it's old, uh, and it can be saved. But there's a level of detail in saving this bridge. Um, there's just a level of detail, and uh, that's why I'm sort of pursuing the more information route, because I think, uh, you know, if you get into something, that's on preservation and you don't have all the information up front uh, that I think you could go into a cost overrun situation. And so that's, uh, I have concern there. Um, and then, you know, the engineering firm, you know, they came up with their, uh, what they deemed is important on the ensure better safety and uh, for the bridge. And then, um, so I guess I would go to my memo and I do want to thank you for the love council member Rocha for putting out a memo as well. And my preference was, is as I mentioned uh, prior to July, um, but essentially, you know, the, the, you know, what I try to do in the memo is to acknowledge there's no wrong answer here. You know, there's the, there's the option for both. It's just what are the trade-offs for both? And council reviewing this item twice and speaking on the item and having public comment each time, you know, went with uh, an engineering board and the staff recommendation. And I don't think that was a wrong answer given the information we had at the time. So I pref I'm, I'm uh, appreciative of the research that has been done by uh, individuals to garner more information and I know that uh, staff and the engineer that did the report sat down with those individuals for 90 minutes um, but I don't I wasn't there and I would really like a, a minimum outcome of today's meeting I would like a full me informational memo or whatever we want to call it of what occurred at that meeting because I want to know what were, what were the issues raised and what were the explanations because right now the public doesn't know that. And uh, my preference is that type of presentation is 
done more in a public format uh, versus a small meeting. But I think it was important to get people together and talk engineer to engineer. And uh, I am not an, a civil engineer. I, I'm uh, looking at a policy level. I look at budget levels. I look at things down the road. And that's what we're trying to do here on, on this decision process. So. Um, I, and I, I'm, I'm also conscious that, you know, we also have this timeline on grants. We also know that we can only work in the creek three months a year. Um, but here's the thing. If, let's say, uh, just throw an analogy that you said 100% preservation, and then we get into the project, and we don't have the further analysis I'm looking for, and then the next thing you know, this thing costs much more money than is, is forecast, that's a problem. And that takes away from money on the trail. That takes away from other things that could be spent in the area. So that's my concern is, give me an in-depth analysis. You know, we test every piece of wood. We do the, the things that are gonna safeguard. I know that, uh, Helen, you brought up the uh, Roberts Road Bridge in Los Gatos, and uh, if, if I'm correct on that one, that, uh, that's actually a new bridge. So where the community gave design input to make it look acceptable. And uh, so, and I think that's what park staff had been talking about, is try to incorporate, you know, design from the people. And Jack, you brought up Hangar 1. And in that case, I think a, a Google billionaire has come to the rescue. And I certainly think with time, you know, maybe there are funds available from individuals. Maybe the individuals that are interested in the bridge also want to adopt it and take care of the stream. Because part of the water district, at least in the report, said, you know, they don't want this structure impeding the flow. And, if, and as we've done on the, did the tours of the uh, area, with, and Larry, thanks again for, for conducting that and uh, attending, you know, there's a lot of stuff there that is, as we're doing the tours, people could pick up. And, you know, maybe that's a way to, to show something with the fact of time. And also, you know, if the county wants to assist, that's, that's great, but it would be even better if the county was willing to allocate funds on an ongoing basis to, to help us take care of it. It's just, you know, it's a shared thing between city and county. And then um, I just think if, you know, you know if you're going to do some major work on your house, put in a roof, redo the bathroom, my guess is you're going to get more than one quote. And that's what I really want. I, I would prefer to have one, if, since concerns have been raised, get another quote. And, it's, and I know you, you could say, well, gee, um, people will bid on it, and that's how you'll get the price. But the fact is the current report has put the scope. And I want to make sure that scope can be had uh, different alternatives. For example, I don't necessarily need to make this bridge capable of carrying a vehicle. I could just make it a bicycle and pedestrian bridge. And if the scope is narrowed, then therefore maybe the cost is less. Because in the end, it's the, the, for the people that, and uh, myself that j share the nostalgia, uh, it's not going to make a difference uh, to, to those people, whether it's a car that goes over uh, or a bicycle and a pedestrian. I think they just care about the structure and maintaining that. And um, so you know, I've, I've, I assume the majority of people have read the memo and bring up the variety of things that I've put in here as far as the trade-offs. I do think, though, it's also important during this time, you know, because I think the topic has been brought up, even though these were public sessions of the City Council on outreach, and I think a real important component of this going down this road is outreach to the adjacent neighborhood. Jack, I know you live close to it, but there's another 80 homes to 100 homes that are very close, and I think those residents need to be informed of what is the risk if we keep the existing structure there. Whether we agree with it or not, I think they have a right to know that if it should burn, this is the impact. So I think part of the review also should contain what is the true fire analysis, whether it's done by a study or it's our fire chief. So the fact is, it's just it needs to be looked at and be dealt with fairly. And I think you owe, we owe it to being fair and open to those uh, individuals that live adjacent to it. I mean, I've gotten emails locally, but I've also gotten emails out of state from train enthusiasts. And, but I, I have to be concerned about the immediate neighbors that live next to it, just like I would on a land use development. And that total cost is important because I don't want to get stuck into, uh, uh, and that's why I also bring out in the memo that I want a more, more than a visual inspection, I want more of a true sampling in, of the wood. And um, uh, yeah, so I think it enables the opportunity for some private partnerships. And I just wanted to see if uh, staff wanted to answer any of the questions that came up from the public or concerns or comments uh, on the grants, on any of the engineering uh, questions, and you know, also about the meeting that was held. So I know I see Public Works, I see Parks in the audience. Mayor, uh, Council Member, if I could, as staff is coming up, um, we are prepared to issue an info memo, so 
out of this conversation today, anything that else that you would like to see and that you've already mentioned about the uh, the meeting would be helpful to us so it can be as complete as possible. Okay, thank you. Before the staff gets started, I have another uh, issue to, just to make sure that we, we talk about it. Uh, one of my uh, biggest disappointments as a council member was uh, learning how difficult it is to do trails and how difficult even more on top of doing trails is it to do the connecting links across creeks or across other impediments like freeways and things like that. And uh, the amazing length of time that it takes to put together a project to actually build something. And even simple things are not simple when it comes to trails for lots and lots of complicating factors. And so one of my concerns about a, a do-over is the impact on building a trail because this may not be a one month delay, it could be a five or a 10 year delay. And if that's the case, well, that's you know one of the downsides of, of redoing it. And so I want staff to at least, uh, if they can talk about the impact on the project of getting a trail because we spend a lot of time with the trails folks. There's a great deal of public interest in a trail and uh, it, it is not easy. And we have the opportunity, it appears here, we've got the project lined up, we've got the money lined up, it could all work. And when that window closes, it might be a very long time before we can line it all up again. Uh, and so I've had that experience as a council member and I prefer not to repeat that kind of experience for the community that's trying to get a, a trail built. So there's a downside risk to delay that's pretty big in, in my view. Thank you, Matt Kano, Deputy Director of Parks, Recreation, and Neighborhood Services. Definitely appreciate all the public's feedback um, today and throughout the past several weeks. Um, we do recognize there's significant cultural value to this trestle. Um, while that may not be officially historic, we do recognize that. Um, some of the key reasons really quickly about why we made our March 26 recommendation to the Mayor and City Council to replace the existing trestle bridge. There's a lot of unknowns when you go into the construction of a, a the, when you go into the rehabilitation of a structure, whether it's an old trestle bridge or whether it's a building. And even though we do have a construction cost estimate from the engineering report from a timing standpoint and a cost standpoint, there's a lot of unknowns there. Um, a huge reason was the annual, a huge reason was also the annual maintenance and inspection and possible repair of the timbers. We don't have the general fund money to do that work. And if for some reason that we, it takes us, and we also have to get permits for when, uh, oftentimes when we do that work. And in addition, if there is a significant repair, the bridge could be out of service for several years possibly um, until we find funding to actually replace it. Um, fire damage was mentioned today. We do have a state grant that it currently expires in 2000, j spring 2015. That state, and because of the construction window in the creek, we really have to construct this next summer in 2014 in order to meet the timeline of that state grant. I do want to acknowledge there could be a possibility of extending that grant, although this grant has been extended in the past and in our conversations still far with, our, with, our, with the staff of the state, they're not um, receptive to an extension. Um, they have, in our conversations with them, they are receptive to the um, proposed project that we have moving forward. The engineering study um, is pretty thick. I'm a civil engineer myself as well, and I've read it a few times, and we met um, the meeting. Councilman Olverio mentioned Harry Freitas from Public Works and his team and the consultant were at the meeting last week. We can provide a report of that in our informational memo, so we will do that. Um, a lot of great feedback back and forth um, on that. And after that meeting, um, we still do feel extremely confident about the results of the study, that it was a very thorough study, and it was, it was a tool in helping us make our decision. Um, it wasn't the overriding, we didn't look at the final report on the study and say, oh, this gives us our decision. We took the study into account um, in making our decision. Some of the other items that came up today, um, the Water District Grant, uh, $450,000, I think, um, grant. We did confirm with the staff of the Water District that the project we're currently moving forward with, which is a replacement trestle, is eligible. To, we can continue moving forward and still receive that grant at this time. Um, regarding the posting of the engineering study, we're still trying to determine the exact date it was posted, but we do know for certain that it was posted at least by February 6th, which was over a month and a half prior to the council meeting. I have an email from Yves Zudi to somebody um, sa stating that on February 6th, so we're certain of that. Um, 
And um, yeah, as, as the mayor mentioned, the impact of the schedule, the, there's a, if we go back and revisit the engineering study, and maybe ask Dave if he wants to expand, but if we did go back and revisit the engineering study um, and have a third party, it, we, this is something that we probably couldn't turn around before the summer recess that would definitely have an impact on our schedule. Uh, thanks, Matt. Uh, Dave Sykes, Director of Public Works. Uh, just to kind of step back a little bit, um, I want the committee to understand that, that our perspective as a team going into this was really to, uh, to renovate this bridge. Um, from my perspective and my involvement, over time as we began to understand the condition of that bridge and what it was going to take to renovate it, um, I think our thinking shifted through that process. Um, if we were to revisit this subject, and I think we're prepared to do that if it's the, the will of the council, uh, where I would want to focus in on is more detail about exactly how we're going to tackle some of the issues with the renovation. Uh, the analysis done by the engineer uh, identifies a lot of the bracing that needs to come out, repair to columns, and replacement of a significant number of the bolts that hold the bridge together. And so uh, as your city engineer, in terms of who's going to be in charge of delivering that project, I, I would want a better understanding of how we're going to accomplish those goals in terms of uh, the construction process uh, to, to renovate the bridge. One more uh, question. The toxic hazard sitting in our creek and the creek impediment sitting in the creek I know the Water District has concerns about the flow, and certainly the neighbors have a concern about what happens if it catches on fire. Uh, yeah, I, I think certainly the, the current trestle bridge does pre present a, a, a blockage uh, for the creek, um, and certainly with a clear span, uh, that blockage would be removed. Um, I think with proper maintenance, you can address that blockage, but it would mean maintenance uh, to clear um, and, and that's something that would need to happen on a, a continuous basis. Um, in, in terms of the treated wood, um, the, in either scenario, um, in terms of removal of the bridge or repair of the bridge, we're going to be down in that creek. And we're going to be having to remove members and take them to a disposal site. Now, obviously, if we're going to remove the entire bridge, there's more material. But nonetheless, even in the renovation scenario, there's considerable material that we're going to have to remove and take to a disposal site. Other questions for, for staff? Councilor Oliver? Yeah, so city attorney. So then uh, if I made a motion to, um, going on what you said, since we can't reconsider. Looking at, at your recommendation, um, what it appears to be doing is well, two things that need to be clarified. You're asking for a study session to consider whether to direct the Public Works and, and Parks Department to select an, an alternative engineering firm to do additional work. That is different than what was the council approved. So if you're asking that the council consider to ha getting another engineering for firm to look over the work that was previously done, that is a different item than when that happened. So it's not uh, prohibited by the motion for reconsideration. Um, but if it's a study session that was previously stated, you're not the study session won't allow you to take action. Hmm. It allows you to have input. Um, and it won't affect anything that's already currently happening with, with the two contracts. You'll continue to work as the council previously approved, pending whatever the study session uh, results. And then that whatever comes out of that study session will have to go to another agenda for the full council to take action. The study session doesn't allow the council to take action. It simply allows the council to get information. So I could just amend the recommendation and say schedule uh, this to come to council instead well, of study session. What I assume you, you want to say instead of a study session is for the council to consider selecting an alternative engineering firm to do additional analysis of the existing trestle structure located, specifically asking them to consider that action as well, opposed to a study well session. Well, that, that, uh, that would be my motion because I think, uh, you know, there's been issues, concerns raised about the report that the matrix had mathematical errors. And if, you know, we're going to go back again, this comes back to the second opinion. Uh, I would rather have, I'm, I'm sure there's more than one civil engineering firm out there, that to have someone else take a peek at it and uh, really focused on uh, restoration. Councilor Constant. 
So before I get into some of the points that we're discussing, okay, we take that action, but then an engineering firm gives a study, and then the council is faced with still having to undo actions no, that well, are done? It, the, what then, the council will be doing at that point is determining whether to terminate the contracts that were previously approved. You wouldn't be going back and undoing the amendment. You wouldn't be going back and undoing the applications. You would be doing other actions that would impact that. So it would be either terminating the agreement with, with CHN2 because you've got another engineering, or you would say that terminate uh, accepting the application if the application can't be modified for this particular purpose. So you would be taking action to consider uh, doing actions that may impact uh, undo what you did, but they would be different than the actions you previously taken. As I said, those actions are ongoing. You haven't undone what you've did bef what you've done before. The question is, what is going to be the impact of getting this alternative engineering uh, survey on the action you've already taken? Okay, thanks. So as I look at this, I think the downside risk is very large. We have something that's going to delay a project that whether it's just a linear delay because we're making a decision, it's just the time for us to make the decision, um, or an extended delay under scenarios that were um, mentioned by the mayor, I think delays are going to be a problem. I think we have the we're putting a lot of grant money in jeopardy. Um, we have plenty of people that agree with the decision. We have, we've made a decision that's less prone to fire, less um, impediment of the creek, lower maintenance costs, um, both in repairs and um, not having to clean the maintenance of the stuff in the flow that gets stuck and the, how long it'll last. And I think that if we are to change our mind, I think we're going to end up in a rat hole of spending that's going to have perhaps a never-ending bill. And I know we've seen lots of those um, already. And I could just imagine having a restored bridge and open up a trail and then running into some of the issues mentioned by staff and closing the bridge, just like we have newly built libraries that are closed and we have residents staring at fences that they can't uh, pass to use the things uh, that we have built and they have paid for. I think if it was demonstrated to me that the council made a mistake in their decision and there was a major problem with the decision we made, I might consider doing some reconsideration, but I think what we have is a difference of opinion. And I can tell you that having thought of all the pluses and minuses, I made a decision that I'm confident in. I think it's a decision that's in the best um, interest of the residents, and it's also in the best interest of the city of San Jose and our budget and how we go forward. So I think we should stay the course and get this trail open because as the mayor said, it takes a long time and a lot of work to make these connections and make these trails come to fruition. And uh, it may be a couple of generations of councils before it gets completed if we change course. Well, I'll, be, I'll freely admit to being a, a trail advocate. I have been since I got on the, on the city council. And so I'm an advocate for this trail. The neighborhood has been, uh, and the community has been an advocate uh, for this trail. And this is an opportunity to move ahead with the trail. But on the issue of the do-over, uh, we had these issues in front of the City Council. We had a hearing. Uh, we had the reports. The Council made a decision. Uh, every week that we uh, meet, we have similar kinds of disputes and decisions, and the Council makes the decisions. And I would think on most of the ones in which there's a dispute, somebody thinks we didn't have enough information or we didn't fully consider something, uh, it happens every week. And so I'm just not uh, willing to say, well, let's just do this one over because some people maybe didn't have enough time or have enough information or have enough of, of something, or maybe the cou council wasn't fully informed. Uh, my council takes these matters seriously. We have staff reports. We, re we read those, review those. There's public debate. I think we made the decision and uh, we should uh, move on and, and build a trail. Vice Mayor. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I wanted to thank Councilmember Oliver for bringing uh, this forward. Um, obviously, the Three Creeks Trail runs through uh, District 6 and District 7. We've done a lot of work uh, on the western part of uh, the Three Creeks Trail, and we're starting to do work now on the eastern part, which you know goes into my district. So, not wanting to sound selfish, but I think that um, you know I look forward to getting this trail completed, and I think that any um, components that would delay or stop the existing work right now would be something that I'm very fearful of. And I, and I think the mayor's right. <clears throat> we have two meetings on this topic. I believe um, the folks who are here um, are also the folks who actually be coming to these meetings. And I have to, you know, commend Councilmember Oliverio for the residents that he have because they are definitely some of the most vocal and the most engaged individuals in the city. And so, uh, you, you know, we, we have done our due diligence in regards to um, asking the public uh, or members of the public to participate in these uh, meetings, both at the council meetings and also uh, out, in the, uh, out in the community. And so I'm, I'm actually, you know, not going to support this. Um, I, I don't think that we need to do a do-over. Uh, you know, we read the report. We understood the report. We voted for the report um, to move forward. And um, I'm sticking with that, uh, with that direction. Motion dies for lack of a second. No, I, and, you know, I mean, the, the issue is, right. uh, I mean, obviously I can hear you. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, obviously the issue uh, has the levels of complexity and, uh, we've, uh, I don't think we've ever sort of done this before. I don't even think back on Little Saigon we ever really yeah. came back. You know, I mean, so it's, uh, but in the end, you know, I, 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 I'm not, I want to be open to other people's research when they bring it to me. You know, when be, people bring me alternative point of views, I want to be able to understand it and acknowledge it, but then it's also my responsibility to safeguard against uh, potential ramifications. And I think, uh, you know, I, I know, Mayor, you've had that bridge and, I think you wanted to build for uh, every time we have a trails meeting, you talk about that bridge <laughs> and it's, it's never been built. And I, I acknowledge that. I guess I'm just asking, um, so you'll have an informational memo come out. Uh, what, what, what's, what do you envision being in this me memorandum? Council Member Oliver, this is Andy Tamanis, Acting Director of Parks and Recreation and Neighborhood Services. We envision having an information memo with the concerns uh, by the end of the week. And uh, that's, so all concerns that have come in with with, a, with uh, an answer, for lack of better words? It would be a summary, and then we'll have some detailed analysis as well. And then, uh, okay. Um, well, all right. I think as part of that, uh, council member, we do want to set the record straight on areas that we've heard are flaws. Mm -hmm. And so I'll leave that to the staff. But as they've briefed me, what's being called a flaw and a mathematical error, I think we believe, and please tell me if I'm wrong, just by way of example, is a difference in weighting in terms of the criteria, not necessarily a mathematical error. So I think given the attention and the editorial and really some of the staff's work that's been called into question, we do need to set the record straight. Uh, to your point, there's maybe no right answer here and it might get to a matter of values, but the council did rely on the professional work of the staff and so I think it's uh, important that we at least remind you of the due diligence that was done, the follow-up work uh, in terms of their communication uh, with uh, among engineers, and then where we believe there needs to be the record set straight. Okay, uh, well, I'll look forward to that uh, coming out. Uh, um, I mean, I have a level of disappointment, but it's not the first time I've brought a memo here that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, and, you know, and I'm still not, still not married, so. Um, and, and, uh, and then, Larry, I, I did want to say, uh, I do think you have a sincere heart on, on these matters, and I appreciate it if I hadn't said it earlier in the meeting. So, thank you. Okay, the committee takes no action on that. The motion fail for lack of a second. That takes us to open forum, unless I missed something. Open forum, we have some requests to speak. Okay, David Wall. First, there's two thanks of gratitude to the city manager. First, for knocking down the weeds in between uh, West Heading and West Taylor Street. That property was a number of acres. It was a fire hazard. And the city manager uh, took action, and it is now not a fire hazard at all. In addition, the city manager, through her excellent choice for director of Department of Transportation, included a section of about 20 feet of 
chain link fence that uh, precludes people from accidentally falling to their deaths and having the fire department for having to scrape them up. I would also ask that the city manager be directed to send somebody from fire prevention to my house so I can show them uh, a very significant fire danger on city property that's uh, adjacent to my property that I need to show them because they don't have access. It's behind the Market Street overpass uh, sound wall. I actually need a gate put in so I can remove the fire debris because I can no longer hop the fence and throw the material over. And it's basically dead palm fronds that have accumulated for the last year or so since I've been incapacitated. Um, with reference to the water district, I think it's past time for you people to start hammering these people about their discovered trespassers down there and the cost that they defer to the city of San Jose to clean these vagrants out. And we can all rejoice about the management change at the cursed San Jose Mercury News. Now, Mr. Rossi is coming in, and I hope he kicks unmitigated tail with that organization, as well as uh, the former publisher is being kicked over to the Denver Post. And good riddance. Yeah. We need to save our newspaper and get rid of the clowns that have run that newspaper into the ground. And that includes that pudgy peroxide bimbo that works as a writer somewhere in there who contributes to the editorial page. Good riddance. Gene Dresden. Thank you very much. I'm Jean Dresden, and what I wanted to bring to your attention today is the ongoing difficulty of downloading reports, agendas, and forms from our website. An upgrade was made of some kind about in January, and it's about 50-50 whether or not you can get anything to download, repeated access. Staff's having problems with it. People on the outside are having problems with it. I've been in touch with the IT department over and over again, and the vendor can't seem to find the problem. On a typical day, I download between 18 and 20 reports from cities throughout the state in order to do the various research projects that I'm involved with. And the only city I have problems with is the city of San Jose. So it's not my DSL line, it's not my computer, it's the city's. And as we keep expecting people to be informed and show up to meetings and have reports read and internalize them, we need to make them available. And if I can't download the damn thing, I can't read it. Thank you. I'd like to refer that item to the, the clerk or the manager to sort it out and figure Mayor, it out. Mayor, I'm actually looking it up because Jean had contacted me, so we had started a case for her, and I was just going to tell okay. you where it was at in the pro or I can I can talk to the city manager to tell her where it says. Yeah, okay. our last update was April 25th. Okay. okay. Uh, Jeff Bedola. Well, here's to doing the best we can. That's why we're here. A season for ethical pause to make sure of the way forward. Remarks based on what I just heard. Was the outreach flawed? Business as usual? You almost have to hope the matter is rejected in council. Significant flaws in democratic process, breaches of ethics and possibly violations of the law require prudent pause. I suggest not scheduling the wrestling gym of Bellman's until the need, I think, for review is acknowledged. I represent the insignificant minority, we call ourselves, which has been systematically excluded in the process. Its only form of participation is protest after the sale of city-owned property development, the Rose Garden resident published a story in which was reported that no one had noticed the closure of Emory Street. I was involved from the time of the neighborhood meeting held at Bellman to discuss the temporary road closure. The view I expressed there was that an open neighborhood was better, in my view. Last year, I was investigating traffic conditions and asked for a review of the effects of the closure. For this, I was removed from the position of chairman of the Traffic and Safety Committee. To my knowledge, this committee no longer exists. Traffic conditions of concern to neighborhood safety continue as before. In the wake of the supervisorial ethics scandal, understanding is warranted. Abuses of expenditure are cookie jar violations, small potatoes. What's really important is manipulation of the democratic process to serve preferred ends. Democracy should not be used to get what we want. 
It is for working together in the interest of the common good. If it is not used for that purpose, it's selling out the community, which is what I see happening here in the larger view of Belmont. Sorry, your, development your time is up. That concludes the open forum, concludes our meeting. We're adjourned.